welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to another mad day in Australia. I'm meeting up with Johnny, who a few years ago decided to recreate one of his dream cars, a Jaguar D-Type. Give the dog a slap. Give the dog a slap. <laughs> Amazing. Johnny, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Australia. Thank you so much. I mean, classic Brits. We, we never go too far from each other, do we? Yeah. I've come all the way to the other side of the world. And you are you are heart a Brit, aren't you? Yeah, from originally from uh, from Croxley Green in, in Hertfordshire. I've been in Australia for about 10 years now. Wow. Amazing. And this is your Jaguar D-Type recreation. Yep. It's, it's stunning. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to strap myself in because I've just followed you down the hill and I've seen that firstly you're not that afraid of going fast but secondly this thing moves around. It does, it's, yeah. it's pretty lively, I mean it's got um, a live rear axle so it's five link suspension. Sounds like there's a crocodile or a kangaroo in the <laughs> pub in front of us, lots of banging going on. But yeah. I mean it's, it's, it's a lively car, it only weighs 980 kilos with just shy of 300 brake horsepower. So it's a metal tub. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a bit of a monster. <laughs> Let's start it up. We're going to go for a drive. I have no idea how my oh, how my setup is going to work today. I've sort of mangled together some GoPros and microphones. As you can see, it's very open in here. Uh, there's not much protecting us from the elements or the koalas that may drop on our head at any point. Was it koalas? What was the thing that was going to drop on us? Drop bears. Drop bears. Apparently I've got to watch out for these. Uh, also apparently any Australians will now be laughing because that's an in-joke. <laughs> um, I'm also going to put my sunglasses on, not to try and be like Mr JWW and cooler than cool, but to protect my eyes because the windscreen is below my face. <laughs> anyway, Johnny, uh, if I can ask you to project nice and loudly, uh, tell us your story. What is this car? How did it come about? Um, it's the fifth car that I've built as a, either a, um, a restoration or a complete build from a kit. Um, started off with, oh, back in my youth I had an Escort Mexico. Okay. So okay. it's kind of like, you know, cars have been a, been a thing for me all my life. But then 50 sports cars got into my uh, into my heart and I'd never really look back. Um, Amazing. I get I get it from a bit of family history, but also, you know, having a desire to have a car that you can afford, but was like a almost like a supercar in the in the 50s. Um, I mean these lines of the car are just so dramatic. Um, As a race car, this I think has to be one of the most beautiful things ever. I mean, Malcolm Sayer, who was the, the aerodynamicist and designer of, of Jaguar, produced several cars, I mean, the C-Type, D-Type, XJ13, and they are cars you just look at and you have to scratch your head because it's, it's the lines that come from aeronautical, yeah. if you like, yeah. and he's, he's basically got those to be in, in road form. And to think that this was one of the most successful cars of its period, and nowadays they're making things like the McLaren Senna. <laughs> yeah, I guess. What went wrong? What went wrong, guys? But was, um, the car was so successful in the in the mid fifties. Um, the D type. I mean, it's Le Mans put in history. 1955, 56, 57, and in 57 they they came first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that's ever been repeated. Ford had a good go, but in the 60s, but Jaguar do have a massive it's domination. 
absolute domination. Anyway, we're on a nice open stretch of road, so I feel like we should stop talking and maybe uh, see and hear what this thing can do. <laughs> underpinnings of this exact car? Um, it's based on a Jaguar E-Type running gear. Um, it's as when you build, there are kind of like levels of replica or recreation that people will say, well, I've got X amount to spend on it. Sure. That's what I can achieve for that amount of level. And I will say that this is at the at the lower end of that because when you get up into tall room copies and recreations we're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars so within my budget I've tried to create what I think my little snapshot in time is and I think I've done a pretty good job. Well aesthetically I am obsessed I mean I, I've always loved the look the idea of a D-type but this particular spec with the British racing green obviously period colour and this is a sort of Mike Hawthorne livery you know he's, he's, a, he's a big hero of mine Britain's first Formula 1 world champion um, bit of a party boy in the day you know he's, he's you know, all the attributes of a racing driver <laughs> all come to, together with him he died too young in a road accident um, but he took a 55 win in a car that I based this livery on, even though his was a single cockpit screen, the 56 screen was a double screen, and that's the, how I could get this variant of that. But the way the car looks, 99% um, there, you know, his number, uh, his steering wheel, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, my little tribute to him. <laughs> and come on, to drive, tell me, I mean, is it what you hoped it would be? Is there is it at a place that you're happy now? Are you still fettling with it? Power-wise, we always kind of want more, but the car only weighs, like I say, 980, 980 kilos. So I guess I'm pretty happy with the power. Drivability, it's not going to really get any better unless I start putting mega bucks into suspension. But as for a, a car that I've got on full registration, I can drive it any day. I just love getting out. It's a usable thing. Yeah. And it just feels, you know, and this is what I love about classics and historics and this kind of era of cars. It's a very different driving experience. It's a real, it's all down to pleasure, you know, like there's nothing here that's necessarily about comfort yep. uh, or usability. It's just about driving pleasure. And whether you're cruising at these speeds or doing what we were doing a second ago, flooring it, yeah. it, it you, get, you get a feel, right? It's a very tactile car where feel everything, everything through the steering wheel, through the, through the accelerator pedal, through your bump, because you're not that far off the ground. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a car that, you know, you have to drive it, it won't drive itself for you. I mean, literally, sometimes it's, you have to hold on. But you, but you want to push the car, um, and it deserves to be pushed, but then you go around town and it's, it behaves itself. So. Oh, and you look amazingly cool whilst doing so. <laughs> and people in Australia kind of scratch their heads and go, go wow, what? Oh, yeah. what <laughs> uh, how long did the actual sort of build take? From conception, 20 months. Huh. Which in, I suppose in, in build terms, is relatively short. Everything costs multiple, yeah, yeah. you know, it costs multiple of thousands oh, to get this thing up and going. I think we're having a really good mechanic. Um, Paul Wallace the, on the Gold Coast is a Jaguar specialist. He's my man. He he's called Paul Wallace. Yeah. He's called Paul Wallace. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he couldn't be more different to a Paul Wallace I know. The guy working on historic Jaguars. Oh, yeah, well, so he, he has a specialist Jaguar garage. Um, Aston Martin train. You know. He, and he took on, and I went to him and approached him and said, this is what I want to do. And he, he basically said, we can do this. Um, we, we've got a 
a good negotiated rape, <laughs> and we went for it. I feel some rape coming. Yeah. <laughs> Should we turn around? Yeah. Welcome to Queensland. <laughs> There's definitely no, no roof on this one, so yeah, incredible. Now, if today wasn't ridiculous enough, I pulled over to move some, well, as you just saw, we pulled over to move some GoPros and head back towards my car. And Johnny said, well, why don't you drive back? So yeah, I am now going to attempt to drive <laughs> this car. I am wearing the wrong shoes. In an attempt to be very Instagram, I'm wearing Yeezys um, that are awful for driving a car with that kind of pedal box. So yeah, this is going to be a challenge. Thank you so much. There's a glove down there, by the way, and a bottle of water. Do you know that? <laughs> Shall I try with the shoes? The steering wheels come off. You'll never. You'll I'll never try. Okay, should I just should I just take shoes. them off? Should I literally just take them off? No, 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 no. Go on, have a go, have a go. <laughs> okay, so first I've got to be careful of this absolutely stunning centre. What do you call that? Centre tubing? Centre? Don't know. It's the centre bit because it's hot. Oh, let's see. I mean, firstly, getting my knee. Oh, being lanky. In okay, yeah. I mean, not not a hope in hell. Right, shoes are coming off. <laughs> wow. Okay, much better. Now I can actually feel feel pedals. How many times have you been in the passenger seat of your car? Never. Never! <laughs> You're being too generous. You, you honestly yeah. didn't need to do this. And you're, you're, you're the only second person to drive. No. <laughs> My mechanic. I, honestly, I don't have to drive. I, I, don't, I don't have to do this. I'm more than happy sitting in the passenger seat. I'm not allowing you to come all this way <laughs> and not. I'm freaking out now. Okay, any, any tips or advice in all seriousness? Um, yeah, just be progressive on the throttle, progressive okay. on the brake. Don't leave your braking too late. Um, and just use the gears. I mean, you'll n just by the by the sound, you, you know. You're good. You know. Oh, okay, clutching then. Clutching. Bit of gas. Bit of throttle. <laughs> this is mental. Okay, here's so my gears. That's five speed. Five speed. Yep. Not dog leg. It's that's I'm in first. That's it. And where are you going, mate? See how quickly I stall. Always, oh, always give it. Plenty, Plenty to, get it, to get it up to and get running. It going. Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay, the, the biggest thing is, which I do remember from when I had to go in an E type, the steering wheel is like a bus. <laughs> my hands couldn't be further apart, but oh my god, mate, thank you so much, this is insane. Stretch its legs because that gear will go on for a long while. Thank you so much. You have oh, spoiled welcome. me absolutely rotten. And I think it's been awesome learning about the car. So. You're Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Thank you. What a day. What a morning. Oh, my God. I did not expect to spend day two of Drive the World getting behind the wheel of a car like that. Now, some of you might be a little bit snobby or, or look down on replicas or recreations, but... I think you're wrong because what Johnny's done there is create a 
version of a car that he has dreamed of owning. If you wanted to go out and buy a real D-Type today, you have to be a millionaire, a multi-millionaire. Well, instead, Johnny's made that car for maybe 150, 200,000 Australian dollars, which is, in the grand scheme of things, relatively cheap. It is at the lower end of the sort of D-Type replica market. You can spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars. Um, his car's got a fiberglass body and then an the aluminium tub. So uh, once you start doing aluminium bodies and things like that, the price goes crazy. But he has a car which gives him a hint of what a real D-Type must feel like to drive. It looks the part. It's still a great driving experience. and. Yeah, I think I think it has to be applauded. I, I really, I'm kind of jealous. I think what a cool way to get a car or to have a car like that. Absolutely brilliant. I'm pouring with sweat. I'm pouring with sweat. Uh, I'm glad to have got out of Brisbane today. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm enjoying my time in Brisbane, but I had dreams of the Australian wild, not city life. And so coming up here to Mount Tambourine, I've got my sort of first real sight of Australian wildlife or nature. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's been insightful. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.